There are eight mistakes I see beginners in macro photography make all the time. And every day people ask me to critique their photos. And unfortunately, I don't have time for that, but I figured let's make this video. And if you are a beginner in macro photography and you go through this whole video, note these eight mistakes and promise yourself to never do them again. I can promise you that instantly your photos will look a lot better. So let's go. Mistake number one, direct sunlight. I would suggest as a principle, don't shoot insects in direct sunlight because it simply does not look good, no matter if you use a flash or not, especially in the middle of the day when the sun is strong. Uh, yeah, the shadows are too harsh, the colors get overblown and sometimes overexposed and you get these weird patterns like some kind of, I don't know where it comes from, but it just looks like small, small glares uh, in insects and it doesn't look pretty. If it is a sunny day, it's still okay to do macro photography. Just make sure to cover the sun with yourself or with your camera or whatever you can find so that uh, the insect is sitting in the shade and then use a flash to get a nice photo. Mistake number two, not setting the white balance right. White balance is something that mystified me a bit in the beginning when I was a new photographer, but it's very important to understand it and to adjust it uh, according to what looks good. And when you're focusing very close, as you do in macro photography, the camera very often gets the white balance wrong if you use auto white balance. So first of all, I am urging you to just set the white balance to something like 5500 Kelvin is maybe a good starting point and make it be there and then adjust it using, for example, the white balance picker when you get home. Otherwise your photos will very often look ugly with ugly colors and you will maybe not understand why but very often it is because the auto white balance sets the white balance wrong. Mistake number three, not using a flash. When I was new in macro photography I didn't want to use a flash because it makes everything a bit more complex and it makes the setup heavier and bulkier. So I tried to do macro photography without a flash. The problem though when you shoot insects and other very small things is that you need a lot of light to get good depth of field. And without a flash, either you have to shoot at f2.8 or you have to use a very high ISO and get a lot of noise in your photos. And neither of those solutions are very good. I mean, look at this photo, this is at f2.8. You can barely see anything because everything is out of focus. So you need to have a small aperture like f8 or f11 and in order to get enough light for that you need to use a flash. Mistake number four, not being creative with your angle. Very often macro photographers who are new are very happy just if they can get the focus right on the insect and they don't think that much about the angle that you're shooting at. Uh, so that makes you very often end up shooting like from the hip or like at a 45 degree angle slightly downwards towards the insect as you're standing and that never makes for a interesting photo. You must approach it maybe directly from the front, uh, the insect, or from the side, or directly from the top, or like maybe even from below. That can very often be an interesting angle. Try to find angles that no other people are doing, or at least uh, no other beginners and uh, then you will have a lot nicer and more interesting macro photos that will get people to notice them. Mistake number five, using a ring flash. And I think it is a mistake to use a ring flash. Very often, if you're a beginner in macro photography, you look at what lighting solutions are available and you discover these fancy and very expensive ring flashes. And you're thinking, Hmm, this flash is made especially for macro photography, then that must be the best there is, especially since it is so expensive. But I'm here to tell you that ring flashes produces ugly photos because the light is too close to the insect and the light is not diffused enough. And even if you try to use a diffuser on a ring flash, often it, uh, it doesn't look good because the flash is just too close to your subject. 
If you want industrial looking, boring photos, a ring flash is great, but if you want beautiful macro photos, you should just use a normal flash and a diffuser. Mistake number six, not using a diffuser. Yes, you should always use a diffuser, which is something that is white and translucent that you put between the flash and your subject so that the light source becomes a lot bigger and softer and that will produce beautiful light and it will produce beautiful tones of colors and shadows on the insect and it will make such a big difference. Um, so if you use a flash for macro photography, you have to use a diffuser, I'm telling you. And if you're not doing it, yeah, it just doesn't look good. I mean, look at these photos here. First one without a diffuser, second one with a diffuser. Can you see the difference? Mistake number seven, no post-processing. A lot of people just take their photos maybe as JPEGs and upload them and think they're done. But then you're missing out on so much opportunity to make your photo look so much more professional and nice. Always shoot in RAW if you're not already doing that. And import the photos in Lightroom or some other editing tool and just try to lift the shadows a bit, decrease the highlights a bit and uh, adjust the exposure so that it is perfect. Those are the only three things you need to do. You don't even need to go in and mix with the colors and stuff like that. Don't mess with that. Just do some simple adjustments of the shadows, the highlights and exposure and your photo will look a lot better and more professional. Mistake number eight, not minding the surface that the insect is sitting on or the background. You should always think about this. I don't even approach an insect if it is sitting on an ugly surface or the scene has an ugly background. Shoot insects that sit on beautiful leaves or beautiful flowers or other colorful um, and plain areas. You don't want them sitting on like sand or for example a classic example is trying to shoot ants on their ant hill. The background is so messy it's almost impossible to take a good photo there. You need an ant isolated maybe it should sit on a, on a leaf or a tree or something then it will look a lot better. So always try to think about this it's not only about the subject it is about what it is sitting on and how the background looks. One good trick to get a beautiful background is to hold something colorful behind the insect so that it can become bokeh. For example, you can hold a leaf behind it, like 10 centimeters behind it, and it will produce very pleasing green color tones and it will lift your whole photo a lot. Another nice thing you can have in the background is the sky. If your insect is sitting on a leaf, Bring it up like this so that the sky, the blue sky is in the background and take your photo and it will look so much better than the black background that you often get when you're using a flash in macro photography. And that's it. The eight most common beginner mistakes I see in macro photography. Mind all of these, try to not do them and your photos will totally become on another level, I promise you. That's it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you like macro photography. I post new videos about macro photography every week. And also please don't miss my monthly inspiration newsletter. Completely free. Go sign up at mwroll.com to get inspired, to learn about new photographers, new interesting gear, cameras, lenses, diffusers, whatever. Go join me now and see you very soon again. Over and out.